doctors are able to take their therapy home with them. Running parallel to the Dead Sea through the hills that line its eastern coastline is the oldest continuously used road in the world, the King's Highway. The highway is frequently mentioned in the Old Testament and records from other parts of the ancient Near East testify it was a key artery of trade and communication between this region and the power centers of Mesopotamia in ancient Iraq. Armies, merchants, Egyptians, Romans, Assyrians, Arabs have all traveled along this road. Today its importance has been superseded by the more convenient desert highway to the east. The King's Highway, however, remains the historic link between Amman and Petra and has recently been renovated. Nowadays is the ideal route for tourists to explore, hiring a car and spending two or three days visiting the many sites scattered along it. These include Madaba and its mosaics, Mount Nebo, the fortress of Machairus where Herod had John the Baptist beheaded, the crusader castles of Kerak and Shobak, and of course Petra and Amman. At the end of the 11th century, the Crusaders arrived in the Middle East. They quickly carved this region up into small kingdoms. For less than a century, these flourished until the Islamic hero Saladin launched the campaign that would ultimately lead to their downfall. This is Karak, which in terms of size, location and construction is one of the finest surviving Crusader castles. It was the seat of the lord of this area, which the Crusaders called Ultra Jourdain. Built in 1142, it fell to Saladin's forces less than 50 years later. And today, exploring Karak is one of the best day trips Jordan has to offer. The town of Karak is the unofficial capital of southern Jordan and lies southeast of the Dead Sea, about an hour and a half from Amman. The impetus to oust the European invaders in the 12th century was in many ways the result of the notorious activities of the Lord of Karak, Reynald de Chatillon. Reynald broke the truce which existed between the Crusaders and Saladin. One of Reynard's more colourful pastimes was throwing his prisoners from the battlements, with the added twist that their heads were encased in wooden boxes so Reynard could be sure they'd be conscious when they hit the ground. The castle's winding passageways and Reynard's extensive dungeons are evocative of those dark times. Conservation is a concept Jordan has embraced, and this place is the focus of a project unique in the Middle East. Dana Nature Reserve was founded in the 1990s and combines social and environmental restoration with the latest scientific research and eco-friendly tourism. Fifteen years ago, the village of Dana was virtually a ghost town. It sits at the head of the Wadi Dana, a landscape of breathtaking natural beauty and diverse wildlife. The Dana Nature Reserve is southeast of the Dead Sea, two and a half hours from Amman. The wildlife in Dana includes 37 species of mammal, many of which are nocturnal, and almost 200 species of bird. The project, under the aegis of the Royal Society for the Conservation of Nature, aims to preserve this environment whilst also ensuring the livelihoods of the families who have returned to the village 
and enables visitors to explore and enjoy what one writer has described as the most memorable experience to be found in Jordan. Whilst visitors aren't allowed access to all areas, there are hiking trails, campsites and plenty of opportunities for bird watching. In the village, a shop sells local organic produce and handicrafts, and visitors are highly recommended to spend a night at the intimate Dana guest house. It's fairly basic accommodation, but the setting is perfect, perched high on the cliff face, looking down into the Wadi Dana itself.